Hi friends, part four and our conclusion of the series, God of Justice. We've been walking through the Old Testament book of Amos, and God is saying to the Israelite people in around the year 750 BC through this book, come back to my ways. He is also telling them that he does not have a stomach for injustice, oppression, keeping the poor down, re refusing to listen to people's cry for justice. And so I think that this book speaks to our situation today as we look in our world and we see people being killed, put down, uh, held down because of the color of their skin. This book certainly has a lot to say to us today. No more important message than this. God will not put up with a nation that continues to oppress people and deny justice to all people. God will not allow it forever. We've seen this in this book. So we pick up today in Amos chapter 4, starting in verse 7. We've seen in previous chapters, God is calling the people of Israel to come back to his ways. They have run away, and because of their free will and their exercising their free will to run away from God, they have perverted justice. They have oppressed people. The rich have said, this is mine. It is all mine, and they've built walls to keep other people away from their wealth and their prosperity. So we pick up in chapter 4, verses 7 through 11. God has a very important message for the people here. God says in verse 7, I also withheld rain from you when the harvest was still three months away. I sent rain on one town, but withheld it from another. One field had rain, another had none, and dried up. People staggered from town to town for water, but did not get enough to drink. Yet you have not returned to me, declares the Lord. Before I read the rest of the verses, God is saying, I withheld blessing. I withheld rain from you to get your attention that things were not right. And still you were so stubborn, you would not return to me. He continues in verse 9. Many times I struck your gardens and vineyards. I struck them with blight and mildew. Locusts devoured your fig and olive trees, yet you did not return to me, declares the Lord. I sent plagues among you, as I did in Egypt. I killed your young men with the sword, along with uh, your captured horses. I filled your nostrils with the stench of your camps, yet you have not returned to me. I overthrew some of you, as I overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. You were like a burning stick snatched from the fire yet you have not returned to me. What is God saying here? Very simply stated, he is saying to those of you who were perverting justice, doing oppression, and not listening to my word, I withheld things from you. I sent a drought. I sent a plague. I sent all these hard times to you to get your attention, and still you would not return to me. Yesterday in our video, I said that wealth, and money and, and our bank accounts can often give us a false sense of security. Sometimes God needs to shake financially secure people out of a self-centered existence. You know what I'm talking about? Sometimes God allows us to be broken so that we will turn back to him, so that we might turn back to the right ways of God. Well, someone might say, oh, that sounds terrible. God would allow all those horrible things. God would try to break someone to get them to return back to him. That doesn't sound like a loving God. Well, I would argue the exact opposite. God allows stumbling blocks, plagues, droughts, difficult time to get our attention. That, to me, is a testimony of his love for us. Look at our world today. We are on a bad path. Amen? I mean, look at all the hatred, the division, the anger, the frustration, the killing that is going on. We are on a bad path. So isn't it an act of love on God's part if he sends things to get our attention? And the point of these stumbling blocks that God might be sending us in America today is to get us back onto a better path, a path that God says, this will lead you to blessing. God is saying the path that you are on, friends, is leading to death. 
Look at our world, look at our culture, you know that that's true. And so God, in his loving kindness, is trying to get the Israelites back then and maybe us today back on track by sending some roadblocks to our way. And so God is sending wake-up calls perhaps to us today. How long will we ignore them as the people did in Israel back then? Friends, if we want our country and our world to get on a better path, a path that leads to life, then we need to listen to God's wake-up calls and get back on the path that leads to life. Get back to God's ways. Here are our action points. First, we need to continue to pray for unity and peace. All week I've asked you to continue to pray for the unity and peace that only comes through the Lord Jesus Christ. Second action point is to live out our faith. It sounds simple, but it is a difficult thing to do at times. Listen, our everyday life should be a testimony to the fact that God's ways lead to life. God's ways are better. When we take what we believe and live it out, you and I are walking, talking testimonies that God's ways are the best ways. Do you know what a lot of our problem is today in this country? Christians say they believe something, but we're not living it out. Friends, if all those who declared Christ as Lord were to live out what we believe, boy, would our our world look different. We need to be walking, talking testimonies that the ways of God lead to life. I hope this series has been helpful for you. Let's continue to pray. Boy, do we need it. Our country needs prayer so badly right now. Okay, have a great weekend. We'll see you on Sunday for worship.